Hey guys and welcome to today's video where today I'll be reviewing, reacting to and fixing your setups. Now before we begin, you may have noticed I haven't uploaded in a little while which is unusual for me. I'm quite good with my schedule. I upload every four days. Um, but I, initially there was a break because I had the flu and it's still lingering. You might be able to hear it in my voice. But then something really awful happened and... Um, I'm not going to get into it in this video because I know I'll get too emotional, but I'll leave a link to my Instagram post about it below, so if you did want to check it out and see why I've been away and what I'm going through right now, um, yeah, it's been tough, but though I promised myself that I would take a break and process everything, I have noticed that I need to be productive. I can't sit around and do nothing. Um, and I know you guys like these kind of videos, so I thought I'd make this. These videos take a long time to edit, so it'll definitely be keeping me busy. But yeah, um, we'll jump straight into the setups, see how many we can fit in this video. I have so many emails to still go through. As I've said in previous videos, I usually post over on Instagram when I'm looking for entries. I think the last two or three videos have been made up from the initial like emails I got back in September. So maybe I will look into um, asking some, for some more setups in the new year. So make sure you follow me over on Instagram at LeopardGecko YouTube. But yeah, let's get on to the first setup. So this comes from Stitch the Leopard Gecko's owner, they didn't leave a name sadly, but they wanted to know if the plants were okay and how they can more accurately measure the temperature in the tank. They already use a digital thermometer on the hot side and one on the cold side. So the plants look fine, I don't know too much about them but I do know there is sometimes a risk with plastics they're being heated and they can release toxic fumes. So just make sure they aren't over any heat mat or heat source. Um, just to be on the safe side. As for heating and doing the temperature, uh, you can always use a laser thermometer. Though I do also have digital thermometers, I also use my laser one now and again just to double check everything. I believe I got mine from Amazon and they're actually not too expensive. The next setup comes from Kenzie. They actually sent in a video of the setup and say that their gecko has a heat mat at the moment but they'll be swapping to a deep heat projector and that they use UVB which is awesome. I don't think they said this in the email but to me the setup looks like it's made out of excavator clay and I've seen some really cool setups made out of this. For me personally I really struggled to even use it. There's like a really old review I did on it like a while ago um, but yeah I think this looks cool. Uh, Kenzie just wanted to know basically what plants she could use and what would be a good bioactive substrate to use. One thing I would say just don't forget about is to use an LED. Uh, we discussed this on my video about bioactive tanks, uh, misconceptions about them and everything. Definitely look at that video and look at the lighting section of that video. Now with plants a lot of people use arid grasses, succulents and even some cactus like Christmas and Easter cactus they don't actually have spikes on them so people tend to use them and they actually flower which could look really nice. You can also add air plants for higher up areas where you might not be able to get soil. Um, I'm not 100% sure how excavated clay will react to getting water on it regularly if you're like watering these plants so I'm not sure what will happen there. But um, for substrate, I use Earth Mix Arid, but I know it's not available everywhere. A few people have recommended an arid bioactive substrate by the BioDude, so that can be something to look into. The next setup is from Destiny. She has a leopard gecko called Gizmo who has a minor form of Enigma syndrome and she just wants to know if she's providing a good enough setup for her. It seems to be a bioactive setup which is really cool to see. I think some geckos with Enigma syndrome may struggle in an environment like this but they're all very different. For example, we don't usually promote um, housing two geckos together but some geckos of enigma syndrome do better with another one in the tank whereas others that would be extremely stressful. Um, some want a basic setup 
and some find that stressful. So really you have to judge your gecko for how it is because it's everyone is different. If it seems like your gecko is getting on really well with this then excellent. It looks like you have made it very interesting given her lots of places to hide if she does become overwhelmed. The only thing I'm trying to work out though is, is it is this poop? Because it's very unusual looking poop for a leopard gecko, that's all I'll say. I was try like, I saw this photo and I'm like, try to work out what it is, you have to let me know. Next we have a setup from Ryan. Now at the time this email was sent, he hadn't actually gotten his gecko yet. Um, I believe he was aiming to get a baby. He thinks the tank is 10 gallons, her friend actually gave it to him. Um, and I guess he wanted to know my opinion on it. Now all I can really see is a hide is this glass jar. And maybe this area over here, maybe... It, this is somewhat of a hide but I feel that either the tank is too small or the hides are too big so like I mentioned in my video where I react to my old setups you can use more more simple hides for babies like I did with Ziggy but I definitely think tank size wise this tank is very small and it looks quite cramped I've made this drawing so you can see like a basic setup so all the things you want to make sure you have in a tank so you've got your heating equipment uh your thermostat your thermometer probes two to three hides a calcium dish and a water bowl i think if you're struggling to fit all of these in and there's not much more room for your gecko to walk around then the tank may be too small so i would probably suggest upgrading the tank and just making sure you've got all of these basic things set up the next setup is for a gecko named Gertrude. So I guess her owner just wanted me to review this. Now I'm not sure if this rock tissue paper hide is meant to be like the shedding area or where the gecko goes to the toilet. The email I received didn't actually have any information on it so I only have these photos to go off on. Um, I'm not sure about the size of the tank but it may be best to size up. I think by now 10 gallon might be okay for like a baby but for most people I would say if you can start with a 20 gallon um also try to get three hides like I just mentioned there there is two hides here and I can see why this one on the side may appeal to you because that way you can spy on your gecko but really this gecko doesn't seem to have a place where it's dark enough that it f it would feel completely safe and secure so you can totally keep these hides if you want but I would suggest getting like a darker cave hide um, and making sure you have a distinguished warm side and cold side and hides on both. Um, so right now you might have a heat map underneath this hide on the side and then there's a hide next to it but you don't have anything on the other side of the tank. So I have tried to edit into Photoshop, it's a weird angle to edit at so I apologise this does not look good at all. Um, but yeah I would suggest once again getting a bigger tank just to accommodate the new layouts and make sure your gecko has some more room, a cold end, a warm end and just a nice dark place for it to hide. Also I did notice your food wasn't dusted. <laughs> So just make sure you do have the correct vitamins and minerals when you're feeding your geckos, even if that is in a little feeding bowl like this. Next, let's look at a crested gecko setup. So this one comes in from Holly. She has a bioactive setup. She wants to know if there's a plant she can put up the sides so they don't look so bare. And also if she should add anything more to climb on, anything high up. So with the plant, it could be tricky because I know something like a creeping or climbing fig will grow up the wall. Um, usually they do better in the frog tanks because they're damp a lot of the time. I'm currently growing one in Lyra's tank, but um, it's usually best grown up a background. So this might work at the back of your tank. I don't know how well it will do on the sides unless you added some background material on the sides, if that makes sense. You can also put in a golden pothos. This is a plant that has really taken over Lyra's tank. And when it gets growing, it will produce like natural vines. So not only will it take up a lot of the tank and provide lots of shelter and everything, but it also provides natural vines, which is awesome. Uh, you can add a coconut hide up the top. You can add cork branches, um, even vines. Um, I know I got one from Exoterra before and it, it did better if you could fold it over and twist it rather than use it singly. 
but all of those things could help work but overall it's a nice start to a bioactive tank i bet by now considering you sent this in in september i bet a lot of the plants have already grown really nicely so you'll have to update me but yeah this is looking really nice Next, Magma Cube asks whether they should upgrade their 10 gallon tank, whether they should get a digital thermometer with a probe, and whether the plant is too big. Definitely think you should upgrade. There needs to be at least two or three highs, as I mentioned. Um, I know people like more minimalistic tanks sometimes, but only one hide isn't even the basic recommendations for a leopard gecko. So, um, you definitely need more room in that tank and you definitely need more hides yes a digital thermometer with a probe that can go over the heat map where the gecko is laying would be excellent it does look like you're using a thermostat which is really good but of course sometimes thermostats can mess up so it's really handy to have that digital thermometer there that you can always check that the temperature is correct so if we we're making a little list for you to do it would be to upgrade the tank get a cold hide and a humid hide and get a digital thermometer this next setup comes from Max. I actually don't really have any pointers in terms of improving this. I just thought it was a really cool looking setup where he's made use of some of that vertical space. It's pretty cool. I think if a baby was housed in here, I would be worried about it falling off of the platform. Leopard geckos will climb. They're actually not bad at climbing. They're just a little bit clumsy. If you have an adult that is long enough to come off the platform, but also step onto another hide or another platform, then that isn't bad. So they don't face plant the floor. Um, I do have ledges and stuff in my setups, but what I always try to do is make sure there are gradual areas for the geckos to come down so they don't just plop right down. But um, yeah, this is really cool. Next, we have another crested gecko setup, and this is from Scarlet. She just wants to know if she should add more branches to her gecko's tank, who is four to five months old. So I do think crested geckos really do like branches, and like we saw with Holly's tank, it's it can be difficult to figure out what to put in that open space high up but branches are great for that so i do like using cork branches i know lucky reptile do some and i have collected some for like future builds and they're actually not that expensive like they were seven to eight pounds and they're massive so that could work i know i think it's called liana wood i have some of that in both my arboreal tanks, the, the geckos seem to really love that too, but that one's a bit more expensive. But yeah, you can add a few more branches, and like I said with Holly's one, some fake vines, that can work too. But yeah, I think overall though, this tank looks really nice. And finally, because I feel this video is already probably super long, we're going to uh, look at Marissa's tank. I believe I've seen this tank before, but basically at the time she sent this in, I must have done a video about the enrichment benefits of using loose substrate and she just wanted to know if she should add some in if she should just put it in a section or all over the tank um and where to put it and so on so firstly i love these signs <laughs> and the knitted gecko that's amazing as for substrate i know leopard geckos would naturally dig a lot so once you do add in the substrate you'll probably see this behavior being displayed and it can get messy but they enjoy themselves but you don't have to add it in the entire tank if you don't want it. You can do it in a section, you can do it in just one hide. I think a good hide for this would be the Exoterra Cave Hide, the one that comes with a bottom. And this can double up as a shed and hide if you wish. Now some geckos will love to dig in it, some will not touch it. Personally, for the actual substrate choice, I now use Earth Mix Arid. However, since you'll be only using this in a small area, um, that might be quite expensive to just buy a bioactive substrate just for that. So you can use something like you mentioned in the email about plantation soils. So something like that could be fine. Anyway, I hope this video has helped. As I said, I may be asking for new entries for these kind of videos in the new year. I still have so many to go through, but since they're from all the way back in September, I'm sure things have changed. Maybe you now own the gecko, maybe you've changed your tank entirely, maybe you have upgraded it. So what I might do is when I put up a post on Instagram in the new year about doing this, if you've already emailed in and it hasn't been featured, it may just be that I haven't got to that email yet. So you can re-enter your setup if you wish, especially if something has changed or you're still stuck on something. But I feel if we keep going on, these setups may be a little outdated. People might have moved on and done different things. Anyway, 
<laughs> I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. But thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye.